So, to continue to expand on our relationship between spending, productive capacity, and inflation, we're going to look at the productive capacity, capacity, and inflation. We're going to look at the expanding the productive capacity part. So, the first sort of way we expand on that is a thing which I can sort of call the number, or rightfully, number of productive units. And the productivity of each. So this is where Coconut Man works his way back in and the concepts of productivity work his way in back into the equation. So a good proxy for the number of productive units I just use is population. But, oops. It's also, you can, like, population of people, obviously, but you can also consider the population of the animals that are food, population, the amount of plants that are grain crops. Um, but instead of considering them usually in population, what I usually do is put them into the productivity part. Uh, you could also consider the population, the number of, sorry, productive machines as well. But generally, the human population um, of people is the best proxy for that part. And then whatever the productivity of each is. So let's just say we had a population of 10 people and they were able to produce three widgets per person per day or whatever, three, just to leave it at three, I'm not gonna put units on it. That would mean the total productive capacity is just the multiple of those, which is 30. If we bring that back up here, put it into 30. Then to get our inflation target of one, what we have to have in spending, 30, and that's our base case. And so if our productivity doubled, which means we'll keep our population the same, times by six now, the productivity's doubled. What's our productive capacity then? We're making 60 units of um, whatever these things are. So we have to change in here to 60, and therefore what we have to do with our spending, that would jump up to 60. And that would mean that your wages have increased because before you were getting $30 for amongst 10 people, but now you're getting $60 amongst 10 people. So $3 per person, $6 per person. If these are the same price, which they would be, then before each person could sort of afford three things per person, three times three is nine. So, but now each person can afford about six things per person. So, well, a bit less, but you know what I'm saying. Now, what can happen, or what's been happening in the economy a lot, is you can, of course, another way of getting double the spending, if you like, is have 20 population, but no increase in productivity. That also equals 60, but this one here is an increase in productivity which means it's an increase in wealth. This one here is not an increase in productivity and so wealth stays the same because productivity is the same. In fact, and wealth staying the same is the best case scenario because what can happen is in this modern era, governments are reluctant to put the money they need to into the economy. So whereas we should have got 60 here for uh, double the population, if the government only puts in, say, 45 instead of the 60 like it should, well, when we had 30, 30 and 10 population, that's $3 of wages each. So I'll just put that in here, dollars three each. But if you get up to 20, and now we divide 45 by 20, well, four divided by 10 is 4.5, and divide that by two is $2.25 each. So if you put the full amount, if you put the 60 up to, like the government's supposed to, you'd be okay, you'd still be on three and you wouldn't have gone backwards, but because governments are reluctant to put the spending they need to into the economy, often you'll find that population increase ones are harmful because it kind of has the effect of making um, the economy go backwards. 
Now, the next part of this video, there's further divisions of productivity. There's lots of ways we can further divide that up. So that's what we're gonna see in the next video.